Our God is great. He is greatly to be praised. He is all powerful. He is excellent. He is our deliverer. He is the restorer. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. Let's celebrate the name of the Lord because he is worthy to be praised. Thank him because he's a faithful God. Thank him because he's glorious in holiness and fearful in praises. Thank him because he's an awesome God. Thank him because he's a mighty man in battle. Thank him because he's all sufficient. He's the king of kings. He is the Lord of Lord in the name of Jesus. Let's just celebrate the name of the Lord because he is worthy to be praised. Let's just celebrate the name of the Lord because he's our excellent, he's our powerful, he is just, he's holy, he's righteous, he's our restorer, he's our master, he's our defender. Almighty God, we come before your presence and we say thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you because you are the king of glory. Thank you because you are the awesome God. Thank you because you are the I am that I am. Thank you because you are the way maker. Thank you because you are the miracle worker. Thank you. Mighty Father, because you are excellent, you are just. Lord, we can call on you, we can rely on you, we can depend on you. God, you are great and greatly to be praised, and we come before you to celebrate your name today in the name of Jesus. We come before your presence and we say thank you, oh God. You are God most high, you are our comforter, you are our deliverer, you are our restorer, you are our shield, the glory and the lift of our heads. In the name of Jesus, we praise you, almighty God, for this wonderful day. We praise you, God, because you are awesome. You are the mighty man in battle. You are our deliverer. You are our restorer. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let your name be glorified as we come before your presence. Oh, Lord, let your name be magnified as we worship you. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father, for you are our hope. Lord, you are the miracle worker, the mighty man in battle. We praise your name, almighty God, because you're worthy to be praised. Thank you for you are just God. Thank you for you are awesome. Thank you for you are mighty. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, we give you all the praise because you are mighty God. We give you all the glory because you're excellent God. Thank you, Father, for fighting our battles. Thank you, oh God, for lifting us up when we fall. Thank you because... Because you are the awesome God, the mighty man in battle. Faithful are you, God, as we praise you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you are our hope. Thank you, O oh God, for you are our provider. You are our sustainer. Father, you are our burden bearer. And we come before you and we say thank you this day in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because we can rely on you. We can cry out to you because you are dependable, God. In the name of Jesus, Father, let your name be glorified as we come before your presence. Lord, let your name be magnified as we worship you. In the name of Jesus, King of kings and Lord of Lord, we come before your presence and we say thank you. In the name of Jesus, thank you because you are the eternal rock of ages. Thank you because you are the covenant keeping God. Thank you, oh God, for you are our restorer. Thank you because you are our provider. Thank you for you are our hope. Thank you for you are just God. Thank you for you are our hiding place. Father, we give you praise and we say thank you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for you are mighty God in the name of Jesus. Father, receive our prayers as we come to you today. Receive our worship as we come before your presence, Lord. Thank you because you are the mighty God. You are our sufficient. You are powerful. Faithful is your name, O oh God, and we praise you in the name of Jesus. Father, let your name be glorified. Let your name be exalted. To you deserve the glory, the honor, and the praise. We worship you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. So God bless you, everyone, and welcome to this morning's prayer. Today we are going to be looking at wisdom in marriage. So we're going to deal with wisdom in your marriage. All right, so um, I just want to encourage everyone that is here. We want to encourage you to take the opportunity to like this video, share it with your friends, your family, and loved ones. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so, and also hit that notification bell. So whenever we go live, you'll be able to see us and join us as we pray. And so as this program is a program that just happened, it wasn't um, scheduled or anything, Liking the video and sharing it will help people that genuinely need this prayer and this message to come along and join us. Amen. All right. And for those that are here, if you're returning or if you're joining for the first time, every time we meet, we read the Bible. 
Um, to the glory of God, we're in the book of First Kings. We're at First Kings chapter 9. So we're going to look at First Kings chapter 9 and First Kings chapter 10. I'm using the names of God Bible version. Feel free to use any version you have access to if you can't access names of God. So we're going to start off by reading the word of God, and then we're going to take it from there. Amen. So let's do it. First Kings chapter nine. Solomon finished building Yahweh's temple, the royal palace, and everything else he wanted to build. And Yahweh appeared to him a second time as he had appeared to him in Gibeon. Yahweh said to him, I have heard your prayer for mercy that you made to me. I have declared that this temple which you have built is holy so that my name may be placed there forever. My eyes and my heart will always be there. If you will be faithful to me as your father David was with a sincere and upright heart, do everything I command and keep my laws and rules, then I will establish your royal dynasty over Israel forever as I promised your father David when I said, you will never fail to have and hear on the throne of Israel. But if you and your descendants dare to turn away from me and do not keep my commands and laws that I gave to you and follow and serve other gods and worship them, then I will cut Israel out of the land I gave them. I will reject this temple that I declare holy for my name. Israel will be an example and an, an object of ridicule for all the people of the world. Everyone passing by this temple as impressive as it is, will be appalled. They will gasp and ask, why did Yahweh do these things to this land and this temple? They will answer themselves. They abandoned Yahweh, their Elohim, who brought their ancestors out of Egypt. They adopted other gods, worshiped and served them. That is why Yahweh brought this disaster on them. It took Solomon 20 years to build the two houses. Yahweh's house and Roy and the royal palace. When King Solomon had finished, he gave King Hiram of Tyre 20 cities in Galilee. Hiram had supplied Solomon with as much cedar and cypress, lumber, and gold as he wanted. Hiram left Tyre to see the cities Solomon gave him. However, they didn't please him. What kind of cities have you given me, brother? He asked. So he named it the region of Kabul, which is good for nothing. They are still called that today. Hiram had sent the king 9,000 pounds of gold. This is the record of the forced laborers whom King Solomon drafted to build Yahweh's house, his own house, the Milo, the walls of Jerusalem, and the cities of Hazor, Medigo, and Gezer. The king of Egypt captured Gezer, burned it down, and killed the Canaanites living there. Then he gave it to his daughter Solomon's wife as a wedding present. So Solomon rebuilt Gezar, Lower Bet Haran, Balat, Tamad, Tadmor in the desert inside the country and all the storage cities that he owned. He also built cities for his chariot, cities for his war, horses, and whatever else he wanted to build um, in Jerusalem, Lebanon, or the entire territory that he governed. The Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites had been left in the land because the Israelites had not been able to claim them for God by destroying them. They were not Israelites, but they had descendants who were still in the land. Solomon drafted them for slave labor. They are still slaves today. But Solomon didn't make any of the Israelites slaves. Instead, they were soldiers, officials, officers, generals, and commanders of his chariots and cavalry units. These were the officers in charge of Solomon's projects. 154 men for the people who did the work. Pharaoh's daughters moved from the city of David to the palace that Solomon had built for her. And he built the Milo. There, three times a year, Solomon sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings on the altar he built for Yahweh. He burnt them on the altar that was in Yahweh's presence, and he finished the temple. King Solomon also built a fleet near the Red Sea, coast of Ezion Geber by Elat in Edom. Hiram sent his own servants who were experienced seamen with the fleet. Along with Solomon's servants, they went to Ophir, got 31,500 pounds of gold, and brought it to King Solomon. Amen. So that's the reading of word of God. Let's turn over to 1 Kings chapter 10. 1 Kings chapter 10 is what we're going to read now. 
The Queen of Sheba heard about Solomon's reputation. He owed his reputation to the name of Yahweh. So she came to test him with riddles. She arrived in Jerusalem with a large group of servants with camels carrying spices, a very large quantity of gold and precious stones. When she came to Solomon, she talked to him about everything she had on her mind. Solomon answered all her questions. No question was too difficult for the king to answer. When the queen of Sheba saw all of Solomon's wisdom, the palace he built, the food on his table, his officer's seating arrangement, the organization to his officials and the uniforms they wore, his cup bearers and the burnt offerings that he sacrificed at Yahweh's temple, she was breathless. She told the king, what I heard in my country about your words and your wisdom is true. I didn't believe the reports until I came and saw it with my own eyes. I wasn't even told half of it. Your wisdom and wealth surpass the stories I've heard. How blessed your men must be. How blessed these servants of yours must be because they are always stationed in front of you, listening to your wisdom. Thank Yahweh, your Elohim, who is pleased with you. He has put you on the throne of Israel because of Yahweh's eternal love for the people of Israel. He has made you king so that you would maintain justice and righteousness. She gave the king 9,000 pounds of gold, a very large quantity of spices and precious stones. Never again was such a large quantity of spices brought into Israel as those that the queen of Sheba gave King Solomon. Hiram's fleet that brought gold from Ophir also brought a large quantity of sandalwood and precious stones from Ophir. With the sandalwood, the king made supports for Yahweh's temple and the royal palace and lyres and harps for the singers. Never again was sandalwood like this imported into Israel, nor has been seen there to this day. King Solomon gave the queen of Sheba anything she wanted, whatever she asked for besides what he had given her out of his royal generosity. Then she and her servants went back to her country. The gold that came to Solomon in one year weighed 49,950 pounds. Not, not counting the gold which came from the merchants, the traders, prophets, all the Arab kings, and the governors of the country. King Solomon made 200 large shields of hammered gold using 15 pounds of gold each on each shield. He also made 300 small shields of hammered gold using four pounds of gold on each shield. The king put them in the hall, which he called the forest of Lebanon. The king also made a large ivory throne and covered it with fine gold. Six steps led to the throne. Carved into the back of the throne was a calf's head. There were armrests on both sides of the seat. Two lions stood beside the armrests. Twelve lions stood on six steps, one on each side. Nothing like this had been made for any other kingdom. All King Solomon's cups were gold and all the utensils for the hall, which he called the forest of Lebanon, were fine gold. Nothing was silver because it wasn't considered valuable in Solomon's time. The king had a fleet headed for Tarshish with Hiram's fleet. Once every three years, the Tarshish fleet would bring gold, silver, ivory apes, and monkeys. In wealth and wisdom, Solomon was greater than all the other kings of the world. The whole world wanted to listen to the wisdom of that Elohim gave Solomon. So everyone who came brought him gifts, articles of silver and gold, clothing, weapons, spices, horses, and mules. This happened year after year. Solomon built up his army with chariots and war horses. He had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 war horses. He stationed some in chariot cities and others with himself in Jerusalem. The king made silver as common in Jerusalem as stones, as he made cedar as plentiful as fig trees in the foothills. Solomon horses were imported from Egypt and Q. The king's traders brought them from Q for a fixed price. Each chariot was imported from Egypt for 15 pounds of silver and each horse for six ounces of silver. For the same price, they obtained horses to export to all the Hittites and Aramanian kings. Amen. So that's the reading of the word of God right there in 1 Kings chapter 9 and 10. Amen. So we are going to look at wisdom in marriages. We're going to look at wisdom in marriage. And we trust that as we get into the word of God, the Lord in, in his mercy will bless us. And he will teach us some things to make our marriage even more beautiful. Amen. 
So um, we have seen, even in just our society, without even looking at statistics, we see that it's very important for healthy relationships. And that is also to complement our well-being. And so this is true when it comes down to marriage. You have seen it in studies. You have seen it in statistics. In fact, statistics have shown that happily married people are better adjusted, more successful, healthier, and even wealthier than their unhappily married counterparts. All right? So despite these statistics, um, the majority of couples still struggle and even divorce due to unresolved conflicts. Some of the conflicts may involve money, sex, friends, in-laws, child rearing or other issues. And so none of those things have the right to rob you of the blessings of God or the blessing that God intend for your marriage to be. Amen. <clears throat> so since God is the originator of marriage, his word is best or is the best source of helping us to deal with the marital issues. So while the Bible doesn't promise you a problem-free marriage, it, it gives you guidance and counsel to help you go through every challenge you face. Amen? So we're, we're going to look at some of some little pointers and then we break them down and we get into the meat of this. All right, so for keeps. So God designed marriage to be for keeps. And let's say keeps, K-E-E-P-S, for keeps. I'll explain that. He said in his word in Genesis 2, 24, he said, therefore... Shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. That's the word of God. It wasn't by accident that he used the word cleave. It means cleave means to stick together like glue. That's what it means. Amen. So his plan is for one man and one woman to be together, to be adhered together as if by, you know, maybe glue together, super glue, Velcro, you'll be together for a lifetime. That is what God intended for marriage. So this requires that the man and the woman commit themselves to each other for their entire lives. And it sounds perfect as we are talking. It, it sounds very perfect. But your marriage, like all others, is made up of two imperfect people. Marriage is not made with two perfect people. It's made up of two imperfect people. And guess what? Imperfect people do not make perfect marriage. I just want you to know that. All right? So we need to have hope in the Lord. We need to have hope in the Lord. And so we're going to talk about this. So most couples, they try to resolve problems as they, as they arrive. But after time and uh, many repeated disappointment, hopelessness can, hopelessness can set in. So when that day comes, it's like, you know, the straw broke, you know, the camel's back. And so this, the frustrated spouse thinks, you know, if nothing is going to change, why should I keep trying? You know, a frustrated couple would think that nothing's going to change. A man is going to change. A woman is going to change. Our situation is not going to change. I give up. I'm not going to try. That's frustration. Amen. But I want to encourage you. Don't give up hope in your marriage at that point. Don't give up. All right. All things are possible with God. And we can look at Ephesians 1, 18 to 20. As Paul prayed for the believers, he prayed that they would know what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. Amen. So the same God who was able to resurrect his son from the dead loves you and he makes the same resurrection power available to you and your marriage. Amen. So whether your marriage needs, you know, maybe a little help, a little support, you know, or maybe it seems beyond repair, you need to put your trust in God. Let him be the source of your hope. Let him be the source of your wisdom because he said it clearly, um, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. You know, so hope can be your marriage. Um, um, hope can be your marriage, you know, to be to your marriage what a transfusion is to someone who has lost a great deal of blo blood. And in order to have that hope, wisdom is required. All right? So in your marriage, conflicts are inevitable. We know that. And we see even, you know, from statistics, um, we see that couples, even Christian couples, has maybe 
a lot of issues, even sometimes more than 10 issues that they never resolve. And so you may be thinking that if only I were married to someone else, everything would be fine. I want to officially announce to you, if you were divorced and you remarry, you will still have conflict. You will still have issues. You will still, there's no, because what I said, there's no perfect person. It takes two imperfect person to form a marriage. So therefore you can't expect to have an Instagram type of marriage. You know, on Instagram, when I go on Instagram and I see some of those couples on Instagram, I say, my God, when am I going to get to that level? But really and truly, if you have an open eyes and you can see beyond the picture, you realize that there's a lot of pain in those marriages. Amen. So we got to be careful. So according to the Bible, conflict is rooted in selfishness. And we can look at James chapter four, verse one. It says that what causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? All right. So indeed, when two people each desire to put their own interests first, conflicts are inevitable. Inevitable. All right. So things can get out of the hand quickly when both spouses re refuse to change because they are upset with each other. However, if you look at your situation honestly and objectively, as if it were someone else, then it would be much easier to see your part of the problem. But all, um, but all too often, we only see that the other person, we only see the other person's fault, and we refuse to change because we are mad at them. So we need to really take a time out and look at our own self before we start to, you know, they have this little saying, pick the plank out of my eye before, out of your own eye before you pick it out of other people's eye. So learn to pick the plank out of your own eye first before you start to accuse your spouse. All right. So there is a better way. And so um, one of the foundation of Christianity is this, is that God demonstrate he love, his own love towards us in that while we are still sinners. Christ died for us, Romans 5, 8. So as believers, we should follow his examples. We should give up. We should, we should give up on our own selfish desires, even when our spouse is not acting the way we feel they should. Amen? And also in Philippians 2, 24, the Apostle Paul urges, uh, urges us to be like-minded, having the same love, you know, being of one accord, of one mind, and he says, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in loneliness of mind, let each esteem others because be others better than himself. Let me just do it again. So in Philippians 2, 24, the apostle Paul urges us to be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. He says, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Amen? So don't fall into the trap of, I'll change when my spouse does. Selfishness is sin. If you are, in a, if you are um, wrong in an era, it's best to admit, you know, admit it and quit it. And even if you're wrong, in, is smaller than your spouse's, ask God to show you how you can improve the relationship. Is there something you should be doing? And if it's so, do it. All right? Remember, the goal is not to be the one who is right. The goal is to have a happy marriage. So as disagreements and disputes arise, ask God to show you how you can be a part of the solution. Right? Instead of tearing down that spouse. All right. So beginning of peace. We need to look at beginnings of peace and that's critical. So whenever you pray about something, you welcome God into the situation and he promises to bring his peace with him. So Philippians 4, 6 to 7, it tells us that don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, by, by prayer and, pet, and, petition, and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. So if you and your spouse are both Christians, it is, it's ideal to pray together about issues as they come up. It's not always easy to do as your flesh probably won't like it, but it's always effective. And so as difficult as it may seem at the time, you need to humble yourself and suggest prayer before things become clouded by emotions. 
So you will find that it's nearly impossible to stay mad when you pray together. And, and, and that happens. All right. So even if your spouse is unsaved, you can still pray with him. Romans 4, 7 um, refer to God as the one who gives life to the dead and call all things that are not as though they were. Right. Romans 4, 7. So when God speaks, miracles come. He, raise, he raises physically dead son from the grave, Jesus, and he can certainly raise a spiritually dead spouse or a spiritually dead marriage to a place, place of new life in Christ. Amen. So words also are important. Words are important. And to be honest with you, when I say words are important, words are killing a lot of marriages. A lot of the people that marriages are going downhill is because of their mouth. You don't know how to talk to your husband. You don't know how to talk to your wife. You talk to them anyhow. You insult them anyhow. What do you expect? You're going to tear that man down or that woman down with your mouth. And then guess what? That person will start to seek affection out there. Then you run come here telling you strange woman is in your marriage. Strange man is in your marriage. Who started it? All right. So words are important. So God's words are not only with words are with power. As Proverbs 18, 21 tell us that death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruits. So any relationship we need to choose, in any relationship, we need to choose our words wisely because they have the ability to tear down or build up. So words like, um, you know, like, for example, some people say, I wish I had never married you. You know, they are, you know, are, they're like weeds that threaten to choke and hurt your spouse. You know, and, and that's just one example. Some people will even call their husband good for nothing, worthless. You know, all sort of things they will call their spouses, husband and wives. You know, like some people, you cook, like some husbands, you cook the dinner for them, they will never say thank you. No appreciation. So, and and some of them will vo vocalize what is on their mind, even about the um, food situation. So we have to pick our words wisely. Because um, words, as we said, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And whatever you say, you're planting a seed and that seed will grow into what you constantly speak over it. Amen. So the, 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 the um, words, um, you know, like we said, that words, they are like weeds and um, that, that threaten to choke and hurt your spouse. And so what they do, they destroy the security and commitment of your relationship. So if you want to harvest a better marriage, you will have to plant better seeds. You need to begin to deliberately speak words that line up with God's word and, and em to emphasize your commitment to your spouse. You need to say something simple as, I love you. I'm committed to our marriage and I believe that God will help us with our problems. You know, and, and things like that can make a huge difference in your marriages. And, um, it's also important to know that finally, and this is pretty critical. When I say pretty critical, I mean it's very critical. Only God can change a person. If you believe you're going to change your husband, congratulations. You sign up for frustration and possible divorce. Only God can change a person. Don't try to be changing your husband. Don't try to be changing your wife. It's only God can change them. But as you pray for your spouse and deal with your own issues, not your spouse issues, you pray for your spouse and deal with your own issues, you will experience more of God's peace. And so you will remember that your fulfillment comes from your relationship with the Lord. Your hope and your wisdom in him will sustain you as he works to change your spouse. Amen? Please make sure you pay attention to that. So one definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. So if God has spoken to your heart through this brief teaching that I'm sharing with you, I want you to really put it into practice. Don't just say, oh, this woman is their Bible, Bible stuff and blah, blah, blah. I don't even want to hear that, you know, because the truth of the matter is that in order to create a strong marriage or a healthy marriage, Wisdom is needed. Wisdom is needed. And so if you desire to make your own marriage stronger and more connected, there is a wealth of so many things that will make your marriage strong, resilient, and satisfying. And even research, we see it over the years, it is consistent um, with the advice the Bible gives for creating a healthy marriage or a great marriage. And I want you to know that um, 
let me just share some um, qualities with you to build a strong foundation for a marriage. I'll just give you three and then I'll wrap up. So three traits to build a strong foundation for a marriage or your marriage or your own marriage relationship is first, a strong foundation for marriage. You know, we know that research tells us that strong marriages have high levels of friendship and emotional connection at their foundation. So simply put, people in great marriages typically think that uh, think of their spouse as close and in, as, as a close and intimate friend. So um, when we look at the three components that fosters a strong emotional friendship correct connection in a marriage, I'll just go through them with you. So the first one is intimate knowledge. So spouses who are emo very emotional connected as friends know each other well, especially uh, very well, especially well. So they are consistently show a, they consistently show a keen interest in what's going on in their partner's life. They're familiar with their mates or their partner's dreams, goals, friends, foes, challenges, joys, you list it. They share multiple points of connection. And, um, you know, to be honest with you, they even feel um, more fulfilled when they can separate, se um, they can um, work together as one, as husband and wife. And so a great activity to build this area of your marriage is, is an assignment. And so I just want to encourage you to connect with your husband or reconnect with your husband or your wife. Um, you know, even if you have a long day, find time to connect with them. Leave the conflict outside and start to work on the positive things you have. Take advantage of some re retreats, activities that will help you in your marriage. Go to people inside of your church, people in your family that have long and lasting marriage. Ask them for counsel, advice, support so that they can support you. All right, the next trait is fondness and admiration. So spouses who have strong emotional friendship bond um, will consistently see their, the good in their spouse and their marriage and will share a healthy amount of fondness and admiration. So they will see the good in their partner and they will verbally acknowledge it. And let me tell you, strong marriages, you know, um, comes with people that acknowledging the, the good points of their spouses and working with the spouse to improve the weak points is that they see instead of tearing them down. So seeking the positive and speaking it out helps a lot in making your home even a peaceful place and you're enjoying your marriage together. And the third one is that you should turn towards, um, turn towards rather than away. So happy couples turn towards each other rather than staying separate. Amen. So you need to figure out how to have that connection with your spouse to make sure that they are all your, they're always in your life and you're always in their life. Cause even though you're married, some people are separate, they're apart. Amen. And so you, when you do that, that type of um, assignment, it gives you the activity to try to be especially mindful when your spouse is turning towards you with a bid for connection and be willing to accept their bid. All right. So, um, we have to just be careful when it comes down to the marriage. God designed for marriage is for us to be together, not for us to be in a WWE, you know, to be tearing down each other. You know, this is marriage is not, um, you know, there's this um, toxic thing on the TV called bodies something. Marriage is not bodies. You know, marriage is supposed to be a peaceful union where people are working together in harmony, showing love. It's not about money. It's not about all those things, it's, those things matters, but it is greater than that. When you commit to somebody, you have to be willing to stay with them through hard times, through good times, through bad time. In fact, the traditional vow say, in sickness, in health, for richer, for poorer, for better, for worse, work with the person. If you're better, if you're in a better state, work with them. If, you're, if they're in a state where you can't help them, get some help, get support, get some counseling, work on that marriage. Because sometimes a lot of us run from what we have thinking that, this is not the best thing for us. And guess what? You run and run and run and run to the worst situation than what you had. Amen. So um, just, um, just to summarize everything, as we were talking about um, earlier, we said only God can change a person. And But if you pray for your spouse and deal with your own issues, you will experience more of God's peace. And so remember that your fulfillment comes from your relationship with the Lord. And so your hope in him or your wisdom in the things of God will sustain you as he work to change your spouse. 
So one definition of insanity, as we said, is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. And, um, you know, as you do something differently, there is a great hope of achieving a different result. There is hope for your marriage. If you use wisdom in your marriage, there will be hope. Amen? So no one should tolerate abuse, just so you know, um, you know, uh, inside or outside of a marriage. It's your safety. Uh, if your safety or maybe that of your children is being threatened, well, I would encourage you to take the necessary action. Contact the authorities, flee from the situation, and um, you know, make sure that you're in a place that you are actually dealing with your safety first. If your spouse or the abuser has genuinely repented, and um, as we see repentance in Mark, Matthew chapter 3, 8, if their accents have changed in their heart and you genuinely believe that this person is willing to give it a second try, you can go ahead, but make sure you get some real support before you get him back into it. Don't just go back in because you're sorry and you pity this person. But other than that, I believe with the wisdom and the help of God, your marriage, there is lots of hope. Amen. All right. So we're going to get into prayers now to pray for a marriage. I want to encourage you right now to take this opportunity to like the video Share it with your friends, your family, and loved ones. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. And also hit the notification bell so that whenever we go live, you'll be able to see us and join us as we pray. All right? So as we are, we talk about um, wisdom in marriage, we, talk, we, see, we, we, we go over some valid points that maybe you could learn from or maybe somebody you know that can learn from. I want you to just take the opportunity with all that I've said to you Go before the Lord and begin to ask him for mercy. Anything or any way that you have sinned against the Lord himself, ask him for mercy. In any way that you have failed to identify your own faults and then instead have expectation on other people to be what you want them to be without even you looking at yourself, ask the Lord to have mercy on you and help you. Anything that you want to talk to the Lord pertaining to your marriage, you know, you know your home. I don't live inside of your home with you. You know what goes down inside of your home. So if there's anything you know you need to genuinely go before the Lord and ask him for mercy, why don't you talk to him now and ask him for mercy? He's ready to forgive you. He's ready to work with you. He's ready. God is always available 24-7. He's always there because he is your father. He's your protector. He is your defender. And he will never leave you nor forsake you. Why don't you open up your mouth and begin to ask the Lord for mercy? Talk to him about, about your situation. Talk to him about your marriage. Talk to him. He's a way maker. He's God most high. He's faithful. He is just. He's holy. He's all sufficient. He's a mighty man in battle. He will never fail you. He will never disappoint you. Why don't you open up your mouth and begin to talk to the Lord and ask him for mercy. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you now. We ask you for mercy in the name of Jesus. Lord, we have talked about wisdom in our marriages, Lord. We ask you for hope, Lord, in our marriage. We ask you, oh God, by your mercy, oh God, to give us strategies, oh God, to Lord God, to work on our marriage, Lord, so that, Lord, we can enjoy the marriage that you have given us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, by your mercy, we ask you to look into us, oh God. Look to see our faults, oh God. Show them to us, oh God, and give us the grace, oh God, to work on ourselves by your mercy in the name of Jesus. Father, by your mercy, we commit our spouses to you, God. And we ask you, almighty God, to touch our spouses, oh God. Father, we recognize we cannot change them. But we know, God, you can work on them. So by your mercy, oh God, touch our spouses, oh God. Lord, work on them. Father, let the Holy Spirit begin to minister to our spouses, to tell them what to do, to teach them the things that they should do, Lord. Father, Lord, my God, I pray, oh God, that you make our spouses, or oh, the priests of our homes, Lord, the provider of our homes, Lord, the prophet of our homes, Lord, mighty God, the covering of our homes. And Father, Lord, with your Holy Spirit and your power, God, we know by your mercy, you can do it in the name of Jesus. Righteous, redeeming God, we surrender. And we ask you for mercy now in the name of Jesus. We ask you for mercy on our homes, Lord. Open our eyes, God. Give us wisdom so that, Lord God, we would, the enemy will not use our weaknesses to tear our homes apart by your mercy in the name of Jesus. Mighty God, our deliverer and our restorer. Lord, you deserve the glory. We cry out to you on behalf of our marriages, oh God. 
Father, take all the glory. Take all the honor. We worship you, O oh God. Thank you, Father, for you are faithful. Thank you for you are just God. Thank you for you are the all-sufficient God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, so if you still want to talk to the Lord about your marriage in terms of asking him for mercy, absolutely, go ahead and talk to the Lord, ask him for mercy. The one thing I want to tell you at the same time, I wanted to take the opportunity to like the video, share it with your friends, your family, and loved ones. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so, and also hit the um, notification bell so whenever we go live, you'll be able to see us and join us as we pray. And so we're going to pray for our marriages today, and I'll, I'll try to include a little of everything so that we all can have a little prayers to pray. And I trust that, you know, it's good to pray all these prayers and say, oh, God, change my husband. But if you don't apply some things, it's like you're praying in vain. You know, if there is, um, for example, uh, you know, if, for example, if you are arguing with your husband, tearing him down, refusing to even give him the, the things that is supposed to happen in a marriage as, from, as a wife, it's going to look outside. And yes, some men are getting all of that and they still go outside. But sometimes we have to look deeper what is genuinely causing the problem and address it. So we need to identify the root causes of these problems and deal with them. All right. And so by the mercy of God, we trust that the Lord will intervene in our situation. He will save our spouses um, by his mercy. He will turn things around and to the glory of God, we trust him to do great things in our lives. Amen. All right. So we're going to pray some prayers for, um, for marriages. So let us pray, pray this one. Oh God, arise. And give me wisdom in my marriage. In the name of Jesus. Oh God arise. And give me wisdom in my marriage. In the name of Jesus. Oh God arise. And give me wisdom in my marriage. In the name of Jesus. Oh God arise. And give me wisdom in my marriage. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. I bind the spirit of confusion. Troubling my marriage. In the name of Jesus, I bind the spirit of confusion. Troubling my marriage. In the name of Jesus, I bind the spirit of confusion. Troubling my marriage. In the name of Jesus, I bind the spirit of confusion. Troubling my marriage. In the name of Jesus, I bind the spirit of confusion. Troubling my marriage. In the name of Jesus, I bind the spirit of confusion. Troubling my marriage. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let the spirit of frustration in my home be frustrated. In the name of Jesus, let the spirit of frustration in my home be frustrated. In the name of Jesus, let the spirit of frustration in my home be frustrated. In the name of Jesus, let the spirit of frustration in my home be frustrated in the name of Jesus. Let the spirit of frustration in my home be frustrated in Jesus name. We pray. Amen. I break the bondage of marital failure and rejection in the name of Jesus. I break the bondage of marital failure and rejection in the name of Jesus. I break the bondage of marital failure and rejection. In the name of Jesus, I break the bondage of marital failure and rejection. In the name of Jesus, I break the bondage of marital failure and rejection. In the name of Jesus, I break the bondage of marital failure and rejection. In the name of Jesus, I break the bondage of marital failure and rejection. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You spirit of marriage destruction, I bind you and I cast you out of my marriage. In the name of Jesus, you spirit of marriage destruction, I bind you and I cast you out of my marriage. In the name of Jesus, you spirit of marriage destruction, I bind you and I cast you out of my marriage. In the name of Jesus, you spirit of marriage destruction, I bind you and I cast you out of my marriage. In the name of Jesus, you spirit of marriage destruction, I bind you and I cast you out of my marriage. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I reject totally the handwriting of the enemy against my life and future. In the name of Jesus, I reject totally the handwriting of the enemy against my life and my future. In the name of Jesus, I reject totally the handwriting of the enemy against my life and my future. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let every evil hour of separation against my marriage be dashed to pieces by the acts of God in the name of Jesus. Let every evil hour of separation against my marriage be dashed to pieces by the acts of God in the name of Jesus. Let every evil hour of separation against my marriage be dashed to pieces by the acts of God in the name of Jesus. Let every evil arrow of separation against my marriage be dashed to pieces by the acts of God in the name of Jesus. Let every evil arrow of separation against my marriage be dashed to pieces by the acts of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I will enjoy the fruits of my labor. In the name of Jesus, I will enjoy the fruits of my labor. I will enjoy my marriage. In the name of Jesus, I will enjoy the fruits of my labor. I will enjoy my marriage. In the name of Jesus, I will enjoy the fruits of my labor. I will enjoy my marriage. In the name of Jesus, I will enjoy the fruits of my labor. I will enjoy my marriage. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I bind the spirit of fear and intimidation troubling my marriage. In the name of Jesus, I bind the spirit of fear and intimidation troubling my marriage. In the name of Jesus, I bind the spirit of fear and intimidation troubling my life and my marriage. In the name of Jesus, I bind the spirit of fear and intimidation troubling my life and my marriage. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let the torment of fire of God be released on all marriage breakers. In the name of Jesus, let the torment of fire of God be released on all marriage breakers. In the name of Jesus, let the torment of fire of God be released to all marriage breakers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh Lord, arise in your power and deliver my marriage from destruction. In the name of Jesus, oh God, arise in your power and deliver my marriage from destruction. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, arise in your power and deliver my marriage from destruction. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Every image constructed to destroy my marriage be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, every image constructed to destroy my marriage be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, every image constructed to destroy my marriage be destroyed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Every evil chain tying down my marriage, break and scatter in the name of Jesus. Every evil chain tying down my marriage, break and scatter in the name of Jesus. Every evil chain tying down my marriage, break and scatter in the name of Jesus. Every evil chain tying down my marriage, break and scatter in the name of Jesus. Every evil chain. Tying down my marriage, break and scatter in the name of Jesus. Every evil chain, tying down my marriage, break and scatter in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So one of the things, you know, when you have your marriage, I find that this helps a lot. When you pray for favor in your marriage, it's very important to pray for favor in your marriage. When you pray for favor in your marriage, you know, favor is one of the greatest things you can have in your marriage. All right. And so when you pray for favor in the marriage, you see the hand of God in greater ways than you can ever even 
think or imagine. All right? So we're going to pray this one. Oh, Lord, arise. Let me find favor, compassion, and loving kindness with my husband. So for, uh, you know, obviously I marry a man, right? So if you're a man, you say wife. If you're a woman, husband. All right? Oh, Lord, arise. Let me find favor, compassion, and loving kindness with my husband. In the name of Jesus, oh, Lord, arise. Let me find favor, compassion, and loving kindness with my husband. In the name of Jesus, oh, Lord, arise. Let me find favor, compassion, and loving kindness with my husband. In the name of Jesus, my father, arise. Let me find favor, compassion, and loving kindness with my husband. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Every demonic obstacle that has been established in the heart of my husband and against our marriage be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Every demonic obstacle that has been established in the heart of my husband and against our marriage be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Every demonic obstacle that has been established in the heart of my husband and against our marriage be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Every demonic obstacle that has been established in the heart of my husband and against our marriage be destroyed in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh Lord, show my husband dreams, visions, and give him strategic direction that will cause speedy restoration in our marriage. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, give my, show my husband dreams, visions, and give him strategic direction that will cause speedy restoration in our marriage. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, show my husband dreams, visions, and give him strategic direction that will cause speedy restoration in our marriage. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, show my husband dreams, visions, and give him strategic direction that will cause speedy direct restoration in our marriage. In the name of Jesus, my father, show my husband dreams, visions, and give him strategic direction that will cause speedy restoration in our marriage. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Arise, move my marriage forward by fire. In the name of Jesus, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Arise, move my marriage forward by fire. In the name of Jesus, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Arise, move my marriage forward by fire. In the name of Jesus, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Arise, move my marriage forward by fire. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oil of favor from heaven. Baptize my marriage now. In the name of Jesus. Oil of favor from heaven. Baptize my marriage now. In the name of Jesus. Oil of favor from heaven. Baptize my marriage now. In the name of Jesus. Oil of favor from heaven. Baptize me. Baptize my husband and our marriage now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Anointing for victory laughter. Fall upon my life and my marriage. In the name of Jesus. Anointing for victory laughter. Fall upon my life and my marriage. In the name of Jesus. Anointing for victory laughter. Fall upon my life and my marriage. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Holy Ghost. Explode in my marriage and my life. With signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost, explode in my life and my marriage with signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost, explode in my life and my marriage with signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost, explode in my life and my marriage with signs and wonders. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Creative ideas to move my life forward. Manifest. Some of you need to say creative idea to move your husband life forward. Manifest. Or your wife life forward. Because we have unrealistic expectations at times for our spouses. And it's not fair. 
So instead of saying, oh, you can do better, pray and ask God to give them some creative idea so their life will be moving forward. And make sure when the idea comes, sometimes idea is not what you think is ideal because you're not God. Make sure to support them. Amen? So let's pray this one. Creative ideas to move my life forward. Manifest now in the name of Jesus. Creative ideas to move my life forward. Manifest now in the name of Jesus. Creative ideas to move my life forward. Manifest now in the name of Jesus. Creative ideas to move my life forward. Manifest now in the name of Jesus. Creative ideas to move my life and my marriage forward. Manifest now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh Lord, my Father, deposit the anointing of favor and prosperity in my marriage. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, my Father, deposit the anointing of favor and prosperity in my life and my marriage. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, my Father, deposit the anointing of favor and prosperity in my life and my marriage. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, my Father, deposit the anointing of favor and prosperity in my life and my marriage. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Every foundational edge of rejection in my marriage, gather by the stone of fire of God. In the name of Jesus. Every foundational edge of rejection in my marriage, scattered by the stone of fire of God, in the name of Jesus. Every foundational edge of rejection in my marriage, scattered by the stone of fire of God, in the name of Jesus. Every foundational edge of rejection in my marriage, scattered by the stone of fire of God, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Every satanic contractor constructing rejection in my marriage be buried alive in the name of Jesus. Every satanic contractor constructing rejection in my marriage be buried alive in the name of Jesus. Every satanic contractor constructing rejection in my marriage be buried alive in the name of Jesus. Every satanic contractor constructing rejection in my marriage be buried alive in the name of Jesus. Every satanic contractor constructing rejection in my marriage be buried alive in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Every demonic antenna magnetizing disfavor in my marriage be dismantled by the fire of God in the name of Jesus. Every demonic antenna magnetizing this favor in my marriage be dismantled by the fire of God in the name of Jesus. Every demonic antenna magnetizing this favor in my marriage be dismantled by the fire of God in the name of Jesus. Every demonic antenna magnetizing this favor in my marriage be dismantled by the fire of God in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. I release the judgment of God upon every strange woman programming disfavor between me and my husband. In the name of Jesus, I release the judgment of God upon every strange woman programming disfavor between me and my husband. In the mighty name of Jesus, I release the judgment of God upon every strange woman programming disfavor between me and my husband. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Every evil agreement working against the glory of God in my marriage, scattered by the thunder of God, in the name of Jesus, every evil agreement, working against the glory of God in my marriage, scattered by the thunder of God, in the name of Jesus, every evil agreement, working against the glory of God in my marriage, scattered by the thunder of God, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh Lord, Release your tongue of fire upon my life and burn away all spiritual filthiness present within me. In the name of Jesus, 
Oh Lord, release your tongue of fire upon my life and burn away all the spiritual filthiness present within me in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, release your tongue of fire upon my life and burn away all spiritual filthiness present within me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Doors that are beyond man's understanding, open by fire. In the name of Jesus, doors that are beyond man's understanding, open by fire. In the name of Jesus, doors that are beyond man's understanding, open by fire. In the name of Jesus, doors that are beyond man's understanding, open by fire. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So I'm just going to look at the comments. Some people have some suggestions. So I'll just uh, attend to them and then we're going to wrap up. Okay. So somebody say, my husband is still committing adultery. He admits being, he admits he's been selfish and hasn't trusted Jesus for a while. Having a hard time. The devil came into my family. I keep praying. Everyone says <laughs> midlife crisis. Well, to be honest with you, like some people got to take accountability. We can't always blame everything on the devil. You know, is he making an effort to change? Is he making an effort to do better? Yes, the devil come in. Yes, the devil can come in. And there could be other problems. But is the person genuinely making an effort to pray, to change? All right. So I would encourage you to continue to pray. Um, you know, if you can get some form of counseling and support, take advantage of that. And also, the, the spouse have to be willing to make some commitment to change. All right? So that's that. So um, just continue to pray and do all of those things. And um, let's see how things are going as we proceed. Unless maybe there's some other stuff that I don't know, but I'm just going based on what is commented here. Amen? All right. So we, uh, we thank our sister there for the super stickers. God bless you. May the Lord prosper you. May he remember your offering. I cover your offering in the blood of Jesus. I pray that the Lord will hear you and answer your prayers in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your daughter that believes and supports this ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So another person said, me and my husband has been stuck at his mom's house in a one-room self-contained house. And me and his sister and him and I have been sleeping all in the same room for the past two weeks. And now we haven't. Because of money problems. Um, the per same person says that, and now his mom wants to, him to get a divorce and his sister is planning to sacrifice me for money by later today. Oh Lord Jesus, deliver us. Uh, I, I believe I spoke to this lady multiple, 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 multiple times. I won't say your name. Um, but I told you to flee from those people that they will put you to your grave. Um, I think I've spoken to you YouTube, in emails, I think in person, if I'm not wrong, you got to make up your mind to flee for safety. You know, the situation wasn't, you weren't supposed to go there in the first place. So if you're at a place where somebody wants to sacrifice you in African language, uh, sacrifice means that they will kill you for money. So if somebody wants to do that to you, why do you want to stay there? Let me tell in the name of marriage, where in the Bible is that? So please, you know, you can do better. Leave for safety. Let God repair your life. You know, God will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy. But it doesn't mean you should stay there and sit under this abuse and all of this um, below normal lifestyle at the expense of a marriage. No, it's not acceptable. So I'm not sure what else to tell you. I think I've spoken to you multiple, multiple times. Um, whatever the mom, you said his mom is praying Catholic prayers and using rosary beads. So that's his, that's where his mom is at in terms of her belief. We can't enforce, um, Christianity on her. The only thing I can say, you can pray for her that she give her life to Christ if it's in your heart to do it. But, um, if she decides that's what she, the path she want to take, we can not change people. It's the Holy Spirit that convicts them. Amen. So I pray for you because you say you want favor and destiny helpers. So um, I pray for you that the favor of God will locate you. I pray that the wisdom of God will locate you. I pray that your destiny helpers will locate you. I put a hedge of protection around you. No evil will befall you. No plague will come near your tent. I pray that the Lord will provide the money for you to come back to America. And in case you know, if you're in America and you're in another country 
and um, you want to come back, you can simply go to the American embassy in that country. They will give you a one-way ticket for free to come back to the country. If you go to them and express what you're going through, the abuse you're going through, the condition you're in, they will give you a ticket to come back to America for free. Find out where the American embassy is in your area and um, go to them. You know, if you're going to a church, talk to them and ask them for help. So you need a ticket to go back home. Even if you have to borrow it from them, do that. All right. So, you know, you say you're in Nigeria. Absolutely. Um, I believe there's an American embassy in Nigeria. So figure out how to get in touch with the American embassy, even by um, email. I think I'm not sure how it works, but maybe you can do some research online and um, see how you can contact the American embassy. Let them know the condition you're in in Nigeria. Tell them you want to come back to America. You're a citizen of America. You said you're an American. They will send for you. America is as much as America have their flaws. They look out for their people. In situations like these, they will send for you. So you can do that. Um, start off even by going on the internet, contacting the American embassy. They will get you. Amen? Um, so let us, um, let us just... Um, Continue. I don't go. To, I don't live in Nigeria. I live in Canada. I've been to the MFM in Nigeria multiple times. I do. I'm a member of MFM, um, but I live in Canada. But I've been to the headquarters more than that in Nigeria. All right. So um, we pray that God will work things out. This lady is not even listening. She says she will contact one of her friends in MFM Church ASAP. You need to contact the American embassy and get out of that place. That's what you need to do. If your friend in MFM will just give you a prayer point, pray this prayer. And then when you die, what are you going to do? You're going to pray the prayer when you're dead? All right. So please um, find, um, find, um, find a way how to get back to America. That is the solution. Leave those people alone. All right. Okay. So, um, oh, somebody is saying that there's an MFM in Nigeria. So she knows. She says she will contact somebody. So we thank for the thanks for that um, word. Um, I just pray for this lady that that veil will be removed from her eye because you know the hardest thing is when you want to be in something. People are using diabolical powers on you, satanic manipulation. It's not right. I feel for her. You know, please don't think that I'm rough with you, but I've been I've I've been seeing these stories for a very long time now, and I feel for this woman. But you have to get that courage to leave these people alone. Run for safety. I will not encourage nobody to stay in an abusive situation. Nobody. Run for safety. You know, somebody want to sacrifice you? It's serious. In, in Nigeria, somebody wants to sacrifice you. Don't take it for a joke. All right. So um, we pray for you. I pray that the Lord will help you. I pray that before the end of this month, even though there's just one day left, God will give you a direction or answer or a solution to your problem. God will make a way for you where there seems to be no way. And as you go into the month of April, God will bring you back into America. Amen. All right. So um, we're just going to wrap up right now. Pray that the Lord will fight your battles. We pray that the Lord will defend his interest in your life. And I pray that the blessing of God that make rich I will, will come upon you and there will be no sorrow in your life. All right. So that's it. Um, I, I genuinely wish I could buy your ticket <laughs> to come back home. I genuinely would buy your ticket, um, but I'm not in the position to do that. Um, but please reach out to the American embassy. I'm almost positive that they will get you a one-way ticket to come back home. Amen. So let's um, just um, pray this one or two more prayers and then we wrap up. So just pray this one. Oh God, arise and visit my marriage and my life with permanent blessings. In the name of Jesus, oh God, arise and visit my life and marriage with permanent blessings. In the name of Jesus, oh God, arise and visit my life and my marriage with permanent blessings. In the name of Jesus, oh God, arise and visit my life and my marriage with permanent blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh God, arise in your mercy and release fresh fire, fresh anointing upon my marriage. In the name of Jesus, oh God, arise in your mercy and release fresh fire and fresh anointing 
upon my marriage. In the name of Jesus, oh God, arise in your mercy and release fresh fire and fresh anointing upon my marriage. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Arise, manifest and restore every dead bone in my marriage. In the name of Jesus, resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Arise, manifest and restore every dead bones in my marriage. In the mighty name of Jesus, resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Arise, manifest and restore every dead bones in my marriage. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You, my marriage, I prophesy upon you. Receive favor and be restored. In the name of Jesus, you, my marriage, I prophesy upon you. Receive favor and be restored. In the name of Jesus, you, my marriage, I prophesy upon you. Receive favor and be restored. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's just take the opportunity right now. Let's just begin to thank God for all these prayers that we have prayed. Let us thank him for he's a great God. He's worthy to be praised. He's Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Let's thank him for wisdom in your marriage. Let's thank him for giving you hope. Let's thank him for restoring everything that the enemy has stolen from you. Let's thank him for keeping you peace in, in peace and safety. Let's thank him because he's a wonder working God. He's a mighty man in battle. Let's thank the Lord because he's worthy to be praised. Let's thank him because he's the ancient of days. Great and mighty is our God in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for everyone that is here, that is listening, oh God, to these prayers, that is trusting you, God, for wisdom so that their marriage could be better. We thank you for giving them the hope and the assurance that you are there for them in the name of Jesus. Lord, take all the glory, the honor, and the praise as we worship you. In the name of Jesus, magnify yourself in their lives by the power and the blood of Jesus. Father, thank you for fighting their battles in the name of Jesus. Thank you for showing them you are the all-sufficient God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Our way maker, our defender, we praise your name and we say let your name be glorified. Thank you for you are mighty. Thank you for you are faithful. Thank you for your just God. You are the awesome God. Faithful is your name and we cry out to you. You are our deliverer and defender. We praise your name, almighty God. Do you deserve the glory, the honor, and the praise? We worship you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, Lord, we pray as well that all these prayers that we pray will not be in vain. We pray that any power, any wicked human being, anyone that rise up against us to attack us these, uh, because of these prayers, Father, we send back their arrows right back to them in the name of Jesus. We cover all our prayers and the answer to our prayers in the blood of Jesus. We speak and declare no weapon that form against us will prosper. And every tongue that rises up against us because of our prayers or our testimonies or the answer to our prayers, Father, we cut them to pieces and condemn them in the name of Jesus. Father, I cover all of our families in the blood of Jesus. I put a hedge of protection around my family, around this ministry, around my life and all that concerns me in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, thank you for taking on this battle. Let your name be glorified. To you deserve the glory, the honor, and the praise. Thank you for giving us wisdom. Wisdom on all sides. Not just in marriage, but in every area of our lives, Lord. We praise you. We magnify you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So for everyone that's here, if you want to be a blessing to the ministry, go to our website, www.ogodariseministry.com. And... um. I just want you to also be a blessing to the ministry by giving. You know, if we have resources in the ministry, in cases like this where, for example, this lady is in a situation that she needs to flee for her life. This is something that a minister should do. And, and just be honest. I, I'm just being honest. A church should be able to do this. A ministry should be able to do that. But if there's no resources, we cannot do it. We can't deceive you that we're going to send to buy a ticket from Africa to America. It's not easy. So, and I know that there are people here that equally they're saying it's not easy. They have their families, they have things too, but every little donation helps. You know, it amounts to something and it can do things in the ministry. 
All right. So please, you know, just so you know, I do have an income, you know, the money from the ministry, I don't spend it on myself. So think, you know, when you give to the ministry, things like these, we're able to do. We do help a lot of children to go to school when the money is available. We help other churches. We help the community. We, we, we put it back in the community. But in things like these, you know, we should be able to stand up and help this lady to get fly for out, flee out of this situation. All right. So um, we trust that God will grow the ministry and we'll be able to do that in the future. And um, we trust that the Lord in his mercy will help this lady in this situation. I pray that, you know, God will just send somebody her way that will just buy her the ticket. Or she can go to that American embassy. I'm very positive that they will be able to do something. All right. So keep this lady in your prayer and let's just trust God for her. And we hope to hear a good testimony very soon that she's out of that situation. All right. So God bless you, everyone. I trust that you have a wonderful rest of your day. We're here again later this evening. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. So that way you will not miss out on this. All right. So God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll see you.